we have our character all set up, uh, we're going to start animating it. We're going to start looking at actually animating the character, see what we can do with it. Um, so what you have up here, you have a tab that is your animation tab uh, and your armature tab. So we're going to flick over from armature to animation. Uh, and you'll see that we have a bunch of new panels, uh, a lot of different things that we can start seeing now. So you have your animation timeline down here, uh, where you'll actually see where your animation keyframes are going. Uh, similar to sort of Premiere Pro After Effects, you know, set a nice little timeline that runs in frames, um, which moves a nice to, to sort of these options up here. Uh, what we have is our FPS, so your frames per second. Keep it to 24, no reason to change that. You know, it's, it's just keep it there. Um, give you time, so when you move over to sort of your frames, you'll see how much time you're actually doing. In, uh, so we move to 12 frames, it's 5, you know, 0.5 seconds. Over to 24, it's your second. So just to give you a sort of nice sort of look at it, um, you have your speed here, so how fast your animation will play here. So when we come to render it, it'll always render at 24 frames per second. This speed will do nothing. Um, it's just your playback speed whilst you're actually animating. So you can slow it down, see how it's looking, start looking at different body parts, see how they move. Uh, but then when we come to render it, it'll render 24 frames a second. Um, so we've got it at half speed to render at full speed and whatnot. That that'll do nothing. It's just just while you're animating. Uh, you then have your repeat animation. So when it gets to your animation timeline, it's just gonna repeat and loop it. Um, you then have your sort of skips to last frames, next frames, play, uh, sort of sword a playback. Again, same as Premiere Pro uh, or After Effects. If you use that kind of thing. Uh, very similar principles. Uh, maybe green a sort of key here. Well, we can move it on the timeline. Obviously, we've got nothing there just yet. Um, on your right hand side, you have your animation layers. Um, so, you might want to add a new animation. Um, we'll rename this one just now to, to Walk Cycle. So, it's going to make a Walk Cycle. Um, just underscores, can't use spaces. So, that's going to be our Walk Cycle. You can have more layers and build that up uh, if you wanted to have your sort of character use one of the. Um, images that we've got, sort of the hammer, the sword, you can then add that into there. Different layers, you can turn them off and whatnot. Um, so that's that. What you'll also see over here is different sort of tools as well. Um, so you have copy keyframes, when we create keyframes, you can copy them. Um, cut keyframes, paste your keyframes, and delete. So sorry, key, uh, shortcut keys for that are copy keyframes, control C. Uh, cut keyframe is control and X. Um, Paste keyframe, control D, and delete key, keyframe is just your backspace button. And um, not really much we need to divulge into this. Um, again, similar principles as uh, Maya, Premiere Pro, After Effects, all that usual stuff that you are used to. Uh, it all carries over, and the, the sort of techniques you'll learn here then they carry over there as well. Um, you do have some other options here. So this is one that we need to talk about: is the auto key. So when I move a certain part of my character here, so let's just move his arm, you'll see it automatically keyframes. Um, just cause I'm moving it. I tend to keep this on, just because I'm not going to be using many frames, so I can just bounce over to one frame, move it, and then everything else gets keyframes as well. Um, it just it just is nicer than sort of turning it off, bringing your animation, pressing K. Move your animation along, pressing K again, because sometimes you might forget. Um, it just causes a bit of an issue. Um, it, you know, it, it don't look as nice when you're tweening, so just bring that speed down so we can watch it a bit slower. You know, it's, it's alright, it works, and like I said, I just tend to, to keyframe. Uh, leave that auto keyframe on. Um, another thing to remember is, when you're in your armature tab, so when you're in your amateur, you create your character, you bring your character in sort of stance, the stance that will always, you know, your starting stance. Um, if you do any changes here, to say bring his arm up, it will carry over to his animation tab. Because the armature one is your, like I said, it's your starting stance, it's, it's what your character always does that often. Uh, so it might be worth just spending some time making sure he's in a standard pose that he can, can then use to go into to another one. This is gonna be like your like your T pause if you were to do a sort of motion capture or animation in Maya, you'll have a T pause. Uh, this is technically that T pause. Uh, so it might be worth just spending some time, making sure that is correct. Is it a bog standard sort of stance that you can then 
carry across um, so let's get into it so the first thing we're going to do is you know you want, you want to create a walk cycle for your character and uh, what I tend to do is on my zero frame Oop. let's uh, bring him back not quite sure what we've done there there we go if you do mess up like that you know if you're not keyframed if you're not an automatic keyframe you know we drag him across we don't want him there just click to armature and then animation just resets it back to back to his key pause as such you know armature animation so the first thing that I, I tend to do is keyframe all your body parts in the frames and start off with so when we're on the zero frame here uh, pressing control and a selects every every uh, bone we have and then just keyframing it so just press k and just keyframes it so we've got them there so then we've got when we come to say create an animation keyframe over at 14 uh, it then the tweening process is a lot nicer it's a lot smoother it's not your first keyframe at 14 so if we like left the lower body and only keyframed it at 14 it's, it's going to jolt the tweening process is not going to be as nice um, so what you want to do start off with control a select all of them them bones and just press k on your keyboard to set an automatic key, to set a keyframe uh, and then what we can start doing is moving things across and starting to actually um, begin to animate a walk cycle. So what we can do is drag over to sort of like different keyframes um, and start actually animating them. So we might want to move on to like keyframe 4. Bring this character up. Oop, I'm selecting all the body parts still. Let's click over. So we just want his arm. Um, I'm still selecting. Oh, there we go. So we select his arm here, and then we're going to start moving him up into our first sort of pause. So all you see there is I'm just moving him over to his first pause, ready to then create that walk cycle. We are going to be working in keyframe, we're going to be working in frames here. Um, it is just you know your standard thing that you would you will be doing. So when we get to sort of set frame four, we're going to want to move his legs, move his arms a little, um, and just create a walk cycle. So you see, just create the walk cycle here. Move his legs to where they want to go. Move these little, just making that nice little walk cycle for him. Just moving him, and because I've got automatic keyframe set, it's then going to automatically set for me. So you'll see, you know, Dan's only done four frames. Yeah, so we're starting that nice process of creating a walk cycle and then what I'll do is I'll bounce over to, to a few more frames so I might go over to frame 8 and then start moving things in frame 8 just to create that walk cycle that I can then create a loop put into my game and start actually so yeah so I start actually just placing it into a game so what I'll do is move again move him slightly move his arms so we're creating that motion that walk motion no, don't be scared to just sort of look at YouTube or actually video yourself walking in the spot to just start actually figuring out where these body parts, where these, you know, where they need to be at what frame. Um, a lot of your animators will sit there and they will have a mirror or video themselves actually doing that motion. So then you can actually keyframe where where you want to be. And you, you're actually visually seeing. Don't do it from a memory. Spend time on YouTube. Spend time actually looking in the mirror and and, and seeing how, how your body parts move. You know what frame, what whereabouts are you in when you when your arms appear. You know if you're walking, you're in a sort of a robotic stance. Where's your legs? Where's your shoulders? You need to actually see where they are. Don't just you know guesstimate. You know while well, my arms appear, one arm might be down here, the legs might be over there. Because you will mess up. There'll be issues. Issue, there'll be contingency issues where you're not moving it correctly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause this video here, start moving my character about, get him to a walk cycle, because we have covered the basics that you'll need. So here we are back on this, uh, you'll see what I've done is I've just done 24 frames, um, a nice little animation, a walk cycle, Oops, let's control Z that. So what I did is just moved in about the walk cycle, every four frames. Um, for my last frame, what I did is I just copied the first one, so this first set here, so we'll do that let me just control C and control V again just so then it's gonna be in a loop let's say it loops out you'll see starts again it just loops from that same process over and over again I see he's quite static he's not really moving much because uh, all I've done is I moved uh, all I've done is I've just moved these IK let me turn this, this automatic off just for now while I move some things um, all I've done is I've moved the IKs like I've shown you 
Um, I'm going to keep it in that and then I bounce back. Um, instead of moving the joints as well. So what we can do is we can start moving them joints. So when you're moving and you're walking, your joints are moving forward and backwards. Uh, so what we can do here, um, where are we? Turn that off to one. So we can start to actually move this over a little. Just to get that sense of movement um, as, 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 as he's walking. So we can do, and then we can start to bring it back a bit. So it gives it a bit more sort of a lifelike movement. Let me move that to move it forward. And then he only wants to move back. So you see, we get a bit more uh, an actual movement with it. Uh, he's going to need some tweaking, some some playing about with. Uh, but it's like I say, it gives that sort of rotation and, and makes it like he's moving a bit better. Um, and I bring that a bit forward. Bring this guy a bit forward as well. There you go. You see, it's still a bit clunky because the speed is ridiculously fast at the moment. Cause it's just one second. We can do the same for the shoulder, so when the shoulder comes back, we can bring that shoulder up a little. And then when it starts to come down, we can bring it back and down. Drop it slightly, there we go. So it looks like that shoulder is actually rotating and moving. You see that? Actually looks like it's rotating and moving. Um, so what we can then do is start looking at actually the hair. So when the hair is moving, uh, the cloth's moving, uh, we can look at actually moving that hair so it flows as such. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll look at next. So we'll move up here to his head. So all we're going to do up here is start moving this, this skeletal system. We'll have to use his points as pause tool, sorry, with W, uh, just to get that correct. So what we'll do, bring him over, bring some pause in. You'll see, we can just, we can just move it slightly. Uh, we've got auto key set up. You know, it's moving these, so it looks like it's moving with, with the wind. So we'll have it going up first. And we can bring it back down as, he, as he's coming back down with his, his walk. Try to, to obviously to make sure we're not having any issues here with it, with it. Characters, actual. Drawings are going out. Let's make it like it's going forward and back. So there we go. And then obviously you will spend more time on this looking at actual animation principles, making sure it is it is correct. I'm just just showing you. So I have to keyframe it. Bring his head back in. So you see, you know, it's just his head moving. He's moving quite extremely. Uh, bring it, you know, it's just, just a little messing around with it, seeing what we can do. And then what we're going to do, do Control C, Control V for that last frame, just so everything comes back to position. We could also do is this. Uh, section here, you know that naturally be moving as well. We set it, start moving things. Move certain sections across. So I did that start keyframe and everything was I did my main pauses. So that's why it keeps bouncing back. It keeps bouncing into a different position. So when you you are actually keyframing your your main sort of movement before we start doing the secondary actions. Uh, try not to, you know, you could try not to keyframe everything like I've done here. So you see it bounces back into this position. And what we can then do is control C with that, bring that across to there. We can start moving it that way. Again I'm not really taking much consideration as to actually how this animation is gonna look. It's just to show you guys what you can do, you know, you want to spend a bit more time than what I'm doing here, doing this. I'm just basically 
going in, not really looking at any direction that it's going in and just, just sort of keep it just to show you what it'll look like. And then bring that back over here, control C, control V. And that's how we'd use as morphs. So that's how you'd use your morph tool. So if we then play this in a loop, let me turn these bones off. So I'll turn visibility off, turn selection off. There we go. So you'll see all he's doing. You see, he's just doing his walk cycle. It is a bit jolty, it needs a bit more time. You know, this is just five, ten minutes sort of doing that. Um, but you've got your morph, moving your morphs, moving your arms, your legs, uh, your ligaments, and whatnot. Um, and you've got your, your cloth there. You see, it's, it is jolty, it needs refinement. You know, I would spend a lot more time on this, and you guys should be spending more time on this. I'm just blocking out that main animation um, as, th as we go. Again, just a quick overview of the tools. So, armatures here. This is a standard pose. It's T pose in essence. Come over to animation. Get your different tools here. Your automatic, your auto key there. So, when you're moving things, it's automatically setting a key. You're not having to press K. Um, if you want to select all your bones, let me flick those bones back on and select them. It's Control A. Selects all your bones. Uh, easiest way I found to come off that is just, just clicking up here in your draw order. Like you've seen. Select the one and then just, it just deselects all of them. You know, all your next frames, you know, you move it over to play button, your buttons here. So what you have is your frames, so that goes back frame by frame. Or you can jump from, from beginning to end. You have your loop button. Speed, time, frames per second. Keep that as 24. We don't need to go higher, don't need to go lower. When we're rendering this out, we'll just keep it at 24. Um, and then you'll use sort of lock, prevent timeline changes. Um, copy of keyframe. Cut keyframe, paste keyframe, and delete keyframe. And then on your right side of your layers. So if I want to make a new layer now, I can make a new animation. So let's add a new animation. I can then start creating a new animation. I might want